Hello. Then. Now. Episode number 500. Forever. Looks like hell froze over. Without any more further ado. To give. Let's jump straight into the show. Hello, I'm going to episode number 29 of the TW9 Challenge Run. Uh, we are here for Raw of 26th of August, 2024. We are, you know, a week removed from the night after SummerSlam. A lot went down last week to to set the stage for this show and the rest of this season, you know, to WrestleMania and beyond. But as of right now, we are in the midst of the uh, WWE Championship Tournament Champions. Uh, last week, Montez Ford defeated Buddy Murphy and C Gunner defeated Cody Rhodes after Cody was attacked to kick off the show by Bronson Steiner. Uh, Seth Rollins had a rather eventful night. And yeah, Jay White defended the Eagle Championship against Orange Cassidy. We had a little thing about um, what went down at SummerSlam with Wesley and LA Knight. And tonight, we've got a Women's Tag Team Championship match. Cora Jade and Roxy Perez challenged Becky Lynch and Lara Valkyria for the Women's Tag Team Championships. We also have another women's tag team match, Stephanie Vakur and Bailey against Nova Nebula and Tiffany Stratton. As well as the next two first round tournament matches being AJ Styles against LA Knight Part 2, because I remember they faced off in King of the Rings. It's actually their second tournament match against each other. And Finn Balor against Christian. And I believe that's what we had announced, but there is a whole lot more. So any more further ado, let's jump straight into the show. Cody kicks off the show. Just so Thompson Boiling Arena. What do you guys want to talk about? I am standing here vulnerable. You don't often see the American nightmare vulnerable. But tonight I am vulnerable, and that's because of one person and one person only. That person is not the Ring General Gunther. You see, last week, me, myself, and the Ring General, we went one-on-one -on -one for the third time. And he finally put me down for the count in this WWE Championship Tournament of Champions. So he's going to move on next week to face Montez Ford in this Tournament of Champions. As for myself, I've been eliminated. But as much as I would like to credit Gunther for being able to defeat me finally last week... It wasn't entirely all up to Goonfer. You see, Cody Rhodes, myself, the American Nightmare, I entered that match at only 50%, if I'm lucky, because of an unprovoked attack by one Mr. Bronson Steiner. Now, Bronson Steiner, he, you know, he's a son of a WCW legend, just like me. So, you know, I've got a lot I could teach Bronson. You know, Bronson has got a big future here in this WWE, but now he's made an enemy out of somebody he didn't want to make an enemy out of. So, Bronson Steiner, if you are a man, if you are this big, mean, dog-faced gremlin that you portray yourself to be, you'll get your ass out here and you'll explain, like a man, why you did what you did. Out comes Bronson Steiner on the ramp. <laughs> he just laughs. He goes, Cody... Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare. Arguably the face of this entire company. The son of the American Dream. So many words to describe you, and yet there's one. One that I don't think anybody said. But a lot of people back there are thinking. Fraud. You see, Cody, you carried that WWE Championship around here for eight months. You were one hell of a champion. And then SummerSlam, you let not only yourself down, but the entire WWE down when you lost that WWE Championship. But look at the state of this place right now. There wouldn't even be a tournament of champions if it wasn't for you losing, Cody. But fear not, because I, Bronson Steiner, I'm next in line to become WWE Champion, except, oh wait, no. I'm not in the tournament, because it's a tournament of champions, Cody. So... If I can't be WWE Champion right now, what is the next best thing for me to do? And let's make a statement. 
as to take the biggest dog in the yard. It's a dog-eat-dog world. You know, they call me the mad dog. And I'm going to fight like a mad dog. I'm going to pick on the biggest dog I can find. And I'm going to spear his boots off. So, Cody, you came out here begging and pleading. Why, Bronson Steiner, why did you attack me last week? The answer, Cody, because I could. Because you are the perfect target for me. I've already changed the foundation of this place. I took old man Big Dave out to dry at SummerSlam. And Cody, I'm coming for you next. Cody takes his suit jacket off and he goes, that's a lot of tough words for a guy standing on the top of the ramp. Well, I'm here, right here, right now in this ring. If you want to come and say something, if you want to come and spear me once again, come here and do it like a man. Bronson Steiner he takes his leather jacket off. Security rushes out, stops Bronson Steiner. And then, you know, Bobby Roode's on the mic. He goes, hey, 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 hey. You know, it's only my second week on the job here. I can't be dealing with this kind of animosity. Look, Cody, I get why you're so upset. Last week, Bronson Steiner, he came out, he made a statement. He took you out and that cost you your main event match against Gunther. I get it. Bronson, you want to make a name for yourself? You know what? I respect the hell out of that. If I was in your position, I'd do the same thing too, so I can't sit here and punish you for that. But what I can do is hold this off. If you want to rip each other's throats out so badly, you can do it in Berlin in two weeks. Bash in Berlin, Cody Rhodes, Bronson Steiner, one on one for the first time ever. And Cody sort of like smiles, he's happy with that. Bronson Steiner's nodding on the ramp, going, yeah, you're finished, boy. You're finished. So yeah, Cody and Bronson Steiner at <laughs> Bash in Berlin. You know, when you've got a character like that that just spears the fuck out, I, I think I want to, I, I, I can, I, I wanted to, so I did it. It's a perfectly valid excuse as to why Bronson Steiner would take out Cody, you know. But also, we did make another good point, you know, he can't beat every champion because he's not a former world champion, so he can't be in this tournament, so, you know, the next best thing is to take out the top guy, and that's Cody Rhodes, especially now, you know, one person is suspended, another person is currently MIA. Speaking of the tournament of WWE Champions, uh, we get Montez Ford, Aura Mensa, Bianca Belair, and Jakar Jackson backstage. And Bianca's like, babe, you know, last week was a big victory. You know, you put Buddy Bloody Murphy down, you know, he's an underrated superstar here in WWE, but you are a former world champion, babe. And once again, babe, this tournament is yours for the taking. And we're going to be seeing new... WWE champion Montez Ford and Tez goes yeah you know I've got to beat Gunther and you know Gunther's this big tough guy he's got this tough guy image but I reckon I can get the better of Gunther in that ring and Bianca goes well you know me and Jakara we've got a song we need to be later on tonight so you know, we'll catch you later and they walk off Montez Ford and Oromets to turn around and Imperium is stood there Gunther's got a big shitty thing on his face he goes I hear what you said you think you've got what it takes to beat me? And Tez goes, I don't think I do, I know I do. And Kunfa goes, cute, cute words. You know, for all these years, a lot of these people have been desperate to see you become world champion. You finally did it last year. But now, I just see Bianca Belair's husband. Then Oromitz starts because, hey, you, know, you watch your mouth talking about Mr. Ford like that, you know. We don't even have to wait till next week, you know. We can beat your ass right now. Then Ludwig Kaiser steps in front and he goes, Hey, 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 the ring general has a very important tournament match next week. He can't waste his time with some nobody like you. But if you two really want to get the best Imperium experience, myself and Gio will be happy to oblige. And Vinci's there like on his phone. And then Luffy goes, Geo, sort of slaps him. He goes, oh, yeah, sorry. He takes the sunglasses off. He goes, yeah, Imperium will make a statement out of you tonight. So, yeah, tag team match tonight. Little bit Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci against Montez Ford. No, Romensa. Ahead of Montez Ford and Gunther next week in the tournament. 76. Uh, yeah. Christian versus Finn Balor. Ends in a count out. <laughs> uh, Finn, you know, he's he's the babyface here, so he's wrestling from underneath Christian. And, you know, he does hit that fiery comeback. He goes to hit the coup de grace on Christian, but Dominic Mysterio pulls him out of the ring. And Finn's like, 
ordering Christian to get back in the ring. Christian's taking an extended absence, you know. Dominic's got a bottle of water there, and he's giving him a big bottle of water, a big water break. He goes, hey, come on, father, come on, father. And then Dijak appears out of the crowd. He big boots Dominic Mysterio. And he sort of just glares at Christian. <laughs> and Christian runs away through the crowd from Dijak, and the match ends in DQ and Finn Balor advances. <laughs> 72 for Christian, 67 for Finn Balor. After the match, though, Finn is celebrating when he is jumped by Dominic Mysterio because, you know, he, he advanced in this tournament over his father. And then <laughs> Dominic's attacking Chris, Finn Balor. Finn Balor starts to fight back out. Christian runs back out from the back. Dijak's still chasing after him. He slides into the ring. Dijak gets his hands around Christian's throat going for a choke slam. He lifts him up, but Dominic, like, pulls him to safety and they, they both scurry up the ramp. And Finn and Dijak sort of share a nod of acknowledgement. Like, hey, you know. Cheers for having my back. And shit like that. Yeah, there's that segment. Then see Bobby Roode in Triple H in the GM's office. Triple H's on the phone. He goes, Hey, it's... It's it's Paul. Levesque. You know, I've been trying to get a hold of you all week, but, uh... You're not picking up, so I thought I'd leave you this voicemail, you know. Your wife's not here yet. I'm sure I'll speak to her when she arrives, but... uh, it's important, you know, call us back. And Bobby Roode's like, hey, you still can't get in touch with him, huh? And he goes, no, I think he, uh, I think he's really mad, you know, I think he might have actually meant what he said last week. And the door flies open and then walks Chad Gable. He goes, shoosh, shoosh, thank you. Mr. Money in the Bank has arrived. So, Paul, I can call you Paul, right? And he goes, by all means. He goes, I hear that you're having a bit of a Seth Rollins problem, okay? Because Seth Rollins is a coward. And he can't face up to the WWE that he's left behind. Okay, right. Yes, he got lucky and was right about CM Punk. You know, when a broken clock is right twice a day. As for me, I told every single one of you about him. And I'm not going to run away because you didn't believe me. Because I didn't expect you for one second to believe me. Because I don't expect anyone to be on the same length as me. Hey, Bobby. You know, how you doing? You know, got a, got a big spot for a former tag team partner of yours? He goes, Chad, it's, it's been a while. He goes, anyway, so what I was thinking, Paul, is, he goes, Chad, I get it. You want to come here and gloat, but gloat on your own time. We're, we're doing important business right now. And Gable goes, huh? Important business, huh? More important than your Mr. Money in the Bank making his demands in this office right now? Triple H goes, yeah, actually, you know, get lost. <laughs> and then Chad goes, fine. I- I'm leaving just because I want to. And then he walks out. <laughs> But yeah, Chad Gable, of course, still sticking his oar in this business because he wants to gloat that he was right. As for Seth, you know, we still can't get a hold of him. We then see the D'Angelo family in Gorilla. You know, they're all hyping up Adriana Rizzo. Tony goes, okay, this is the biggest match of your career, Riz. You know, a lot of people, they, they think you're just a pretty face. But you know, we are the businesswoman here. You, you do the dealings for the family. Okay, last week, Stax and Tool Dance, they came up short in their quest to become the, the, the World Tag Team Champions. But tonight, you make the first step of your guest to becoming the first D'Angelo family member to win championship gold here in WWE. But we, you go up there, you shock the world, you win tonight. You pin Jade Cargill and you move up the ladder to become the next Liberty Champion. And then Rizzo's like, I will do it. I'll do it, Don. You know, I won't let you down. Uh, She does actually do all right. Five minutes against Jade Cargill is, I guess, all right. For Adriana Rizzo of all people. But, of course, she does come up short. Uh, Jade wins with a Jade in 506. 73 for Jade. 22 for Rizzo. Yeah. After the match, though, Malcolm Bivens takes the mic. He goes, Last week, this absolute goddess that stands before you right now Jade Cargill made a statement after her return to WWE at SummerSlam Rhea Ripley, who you ain't gonna see around here for many, many months now is out because of this bitch right here, Jade Cargill but what happened last week was Jade Cargill and more importantly myself were strung and struck by a freak (laughs) now, now, don't get me wrong Malcolm Bivens, he can get freaky but this kind of freak, this Tatum Packley chick, she ain't the kind of freak Malcolm Bivens gets down with, you get what I'm saying. So, if she wants to walk around here in the absence of her mommy, a little lost lamb, jumping 
this woman? Look at this woman. Would you want to jump this woman? Man or woman, any of you in the back. Nobody would want to fight Jade Cargill. But it seems Tatum Baxley, you know, hasn't got any brains up in her big-ass head. So, she jumped that bitch Jade Cargill last week. And if she wants a fight with an Adonis, an Amazon like Jade Cargill, she knows where to find us. <laughs> we didn't see Wesley. Wesley walking through the hallway. When, uh... The prime, the prime stooges walk up to him, you know. Without Logan Paul and KSI, they are just a mid-card gaggle of mid mid-carders. <laughs> but they're funny, so it's fine. <laughs> and Jeff Jarrett's like, hey, kid. You know, we couldn't help but notice. You're getting into business with that LA Knight and that Jay White. You know, we've, we've been there. You know, as a matter of fact, the Switchblade, he's only the Equinal Champion right now because of our good friend Logan Paul. And, uh, Myself and Carlito and Grimes, you know, we've got stocks in this this prime business. So, you know, if you if you're lost and you can't get in a can't get into the switchblade group, you know, there's always room for more stockholders here at the prime prime group holdings. And Wesley goes, Yeah, I'm not interested. You know. Myself and LA Knight we had a bit of a, a beef last week, but hey, you know, it's all water under the bridge. But hey, you know, what I do want is a fight. So how about tonight, one of you three faces me in a match and then Jeff Jarrett goes if you're gonna learn to mess with J-E-double-F J-A-double-R-E-double-T you're on as a former Intercontinental Champion actually no these are all former Intercontinental Champions <laughs> as a former Intercontinental Champion myself I'll put you in your place boy so yeah Jeff Jeff Jarrett and Wesley next, later on tonight that should be a hoot and then cut backstage and Nova is in Gorilla getting ready for the tag match when the blonde Barbies walk up to her. And she goes, um, excuse me. And Nova goes, can I help you? She goes, you know, since we're apparently, you know, partners in this in this tag match coming up next, I just wanted to say that uh, you and I, you might have got off on the wrong foot, you know, when you first came back here today, but we, you know, all this time I thought you were this weird alien girl, but you know, you're actually, you're actually more than that. You're actually... Okay, you are still the weird alien girl, but you're also the WWE Women's Champion. And I can respect you being champion, because one day I'll be champion too, you see. And of course, Tiffany, you haven't got to borrow up to me, because we're tag team partners right here. Because I don't like you, and I know you still don't like me. She goes, huh, rude. Cause, but, you're right. Maybe we did get off on the wrong foot. Maybe, you been working around here this whole time with you and these two blonde bimbos behind you thinking you're the center of the universe because you've got two people eating out of the palms of your hand. Well, have you ever heard of a thing called the multiverse, Tiffany? Because you might be the center of your little universe, but you've got to wake up to reality and realize what universe you're actually living in. That's this universe, the universe that revolves around this here in my hand. And whoever holds this is the center of this universe. And that's me. Toodles. And then Nova goes out for the match. Tiffany, you know, is scowling at Nova. And then Amory and Mariah are like, hey, you know, calm down, Tiff. You know, she's not worth it. Don't rise. We then get the tag match. Gets an 87. Holy fucking shit. Let's go. And of course, Bailey and Stephanie, two, you know, wrestlers, two respectable Latinas. They can coexist, but of course, <laughs> Tiffany and Nova cannot. And Nova ends up smacking Tiffany. Bailey hits the rose plant, pins Tiffany Stratton, and Stephanie the Kerr and Bailey do win this tag team match. Seventy two for Bailey. No, seventy two for Tiffany, ninety for Nova, seventy eight for Stephanie, and eighty two for Bailey. Nice. Bang a little match right there. <laughs> I guess that makes up for this week's uh, first Derby title match being a little bit mid. After the match, though, <laughs> Nova and Tiffany, they sort of get into an argument. And she goes, what the hell? You know, why'd you hit me? Because you got in my way, you know. I told you, you know, we're never going to like each other. It's all about this. And then Nova does start attacking Tiffany Stratton in the ring. And then <laughs> Bailey and Stephanie, like, they're halfway up the ramp celebrating. And they sort of just stop and turn around and watch Nova, like, attack Tiffany in the ring. And they sort of, like, look at each other. 
And then they just all shrug their shoulders, they rush in, they attack Nova Nebula. And Nova, Nova, Nova retreats. And then they sort of awkwardly look back at Tiffany, and Tiffany just storms out, you know, huffs and storms up the ramp. Grand Jury promo. They're backstage in their little purple room. And Damien Priest like, two weeks ago, I whooped that trick. Your hero couldn't do anything when he saw Russ coming. But Trick, like I said, he comes for us all. And he has given us a very clear warning, a very clear message, and that's to end this. So I'm going to reach out to you one more time, Trick. Do what's right. Become a member of the Grand Jury and this will all go away. Because if you don't, I'll see to you next week and we can put this to bed that way. So yeah, Damien Priest, I guess, getting orders from a higher being or some sort of mysterious other person to, I guess, recruit Trick Williams into the group. And Emerson and Ken, you know, just stood backstage, stood back behind, nodding, going, yeah, you know, we have also heard from this guy. We like him. <laughs> backstage promo. Or interview, even. Kathy Kelly's with Path of the Dragon, the World Tag Team Champions. You know, Zia Lee and Zergis stood there as well. She goes, boys, last week you made your first defense once again of the World Tag Team Champions. You're beating the D'Angelo family, but with WWE Bash in Berlin... You know, just a couple of weeks away, you gotta think there'll be a big World Tag Team Championship defense on Path of the Dragon on that show. And Alberto goes, Kathy, it will never get old to have me and my good friend Akira back together, our friend Zergis by our side, this entire group Path of the Dragon back on top where we need to be. The D'Angelo kids, you know, they've got they've got promise. But they're not quite at our level just yet. But I appreciate them stepping up and I respect it because you know Four years ago, we were in their position. We were the, the lowest team on the totem pole, but it's it's with those opportunities that you rise up the ranks, Kathy. And as for Bash and Berlin, I say this tag team division has risen as high as it could possibly get. There's only one way to make a statement, and Bash and Berlin, we're going to have a huge World Tag Team Champion defense against whoever the top challengers may be. Let Imperium walk past in their gear, you know, heading out to the ring. Because I couldn't help but overhear you two clowns talking about Bash in Berlin. Kathy Kelly, if you will. And she's like, sure. And she hands in the mic. He goes, there is millions of people in Deutschland waiting with bated breath. To see what's gonna go down in Berlin, WWE's first premium live event in Germany, and they're waiting with bated breath not to see what major tag team championship match you two are gonna be a part of. No, they're waiting to see what Ludwig Kaiser is gonna do in Berlin. But hey, watch out for this tag team match tonight. Because when me and Gio pick up that win, who knows? Maybe we will have the biggest World Tag Team Championship match possible in the great nation of Deutschland. And then they walk off. And a bird went to Zawa, sort of just like, look at each other, look at Zergis. Message heard loud and clear. 70, no, that's a lot better than I thought it would be. Jeff Jarrett is exhausted and he's washed, but he's he's funny, so I'm going to keep booking him. But also, he can be carried. 79 is a really good, that's only two rings worse than what Wesley got. So, yeah. Good old Double J. He's cooking. <laughs> uh, but Wesley does win, of course, in 757. 81 for Wes, 49 for Jeff Jarrett. Now, after the match, Wesley's celebrating. You know, he leaves the ring, he's going back up the ramp. When LA Knight's music hits and he's making his way out for his tournament match. And they sort of like cross paths on the ramp. LA Knight, uh, where Wesley, like, he goes to like give him a handshake on his way down to the ring. But LA Knight just swaggers his way down the ring. And he sort of shoulder checks Wesley on his way down. And Wesley's clearly disrespected by that. And he just sort of shakes his head. 
and then walks back up the ramp. Before we get to that, though, we do see Bailey and Stephanie Vakir sort of just chatting about their win backstage when Tiffany Stratton walks up to him and she's all angry. She goes, what the hell was that? Uh, and Bailey's like, I believe the word you're looking for are, you're welcome, or thank you. Tiffany goes, why would I say thank you? I don't want your help. I don't need your help. Okay. Nova took a cheap shot on me because she's jealous of me. Okay. She knows that I'm still the center of the universe, even though she's the champion, so I'm going to take her championship. I don't need you, and especially you, getting involved in my business. Bailey goes, well, you know, if you're involved in the champ's business, that's kind of my business because I wanted my rematch for that championship. So if you're going to keep getting in my way, maybe it is my business. And Tiffany goes, if you think it's your business... But there's only one place to settle our business then, isn't there? And that's in the ring, next week. Bailey goes, great, I'll go talk to Bobby right now, I look forward to it. And Tiffany walks off. And Stephanie's over to laugh, because what's her problem? But yeah, Bailey and Tiffany's round next week. 84. I'll take that. 81 for AJ. I can't remember what he got at SummerSlam, but I'm pretty sure it was in the 60s. So there you go, there's those <coughs> stem cells at work. Uh, but yes, Wesley does come out and he hits the cardiac kick on LA Knight again and AJ Styles hits the, the phenomenal forearm to pin him. So for the second straight tournament, LA Knight has been eliminated by AJ Styles because of some fuckery at ringside. The first was by Jay White, this time by Wesley. And AJ does a win, so we're going to get a SummerSlam rematch between him and Finn Balor next week, which should be better than the SummerSlam match because again, AJ stem cells are already showing great results. Two thumbs up from me. Great work down in Columbia, Ray J. We then cut backstage. We see Tate and Paxley. You know, she's sort of just like playing around with some dolls. Backstage, she goes, Jade Cargill, okay? She wants to fight me? Okay, she wants to call me freak? I'm not a freak. I'm normal, okay? I'm normal. Mommy's gone. Mommy's gone. Mommy will be back soon. Mommy will always come back. And then we see Manny and Dio sort of like peer around the corner and Dio and Manny or Dio sort of like Archer's Manny to Wolf's Tatum. And he walks up to her and she goes, Hey Tatum and she sort of like snaps and goes, What? What do you want? I'm just checking uh You're sort of in the uh weird area. Goes, I'm not weird, because I'm not, I mean it, it's a positive, it's a compliment. Good weird, good a weird of endearment. Anyway, of that, they were sort of in that sort of area of the women's locker room, right? Seen anyone new around there lately? Anyone different? Tim goes, Mommy's gone. That's the only difference I see. Now, if you haven't seen Japanese girl, Bob haircut, short, and Tim goes, No, unless you mean Mackie. He goes, I don't. He goes, Sorry. I can only think about Mommy. I can only see Mommy. And Jay Cargill and she walks off and then Dio goes any luck and he goes nah no luck Jet and him and then he, they turn around and go have you seen Saray and then LA Knight just storms past and just shoulder checks Manny and he goes move out of my way and he goes hey kid and where's Lee sort of there and he goes what was that about huh you want to tell me that was an accident too huh and then Wesley goes look that wasn't an accident okay you ran your mouth I checked your shit in that's what happens around here, okay? We may have, we may respect me, but I ain't gonna be disrespected the way you disrespected me tonight. I guess, oh, I disrespected you, okay? Well, you see what happened. This is the second time you've got your nose up at my business. If you're telling me this time wasn't a mistake, what makes you think the one back at SummerSlam wasn't a mistake? Because you, you're just trying your hardest to make a name out of LA night. I'm not gonna have it. In fact, if you want this Intercontinental Championship so bad, how about next week, you and I, one on one in that ring, and we'll have a number one contenders match. The winner goes to Berlin to wrestle the Bitch Blade to become the Incarnate Champion. And I'm going to stomp your ass out, because I'm going to stomp his ass out. Because you don't get to get your name made at the expense of LA Knight, because this isn't your game. It's mine, and forever mine. Yeah. So yeah. Where's Lee? Coming clean saying tonight, well, well he, still, he still says SummerSlam was a mistake, but tonight, you know, he has been disrespected the last two weeks by both Wesley, no, by both LA Knight and Jay White. So, like, I guess he has a reason to fuck over LA Knight. But yeah, they will wrestle next week in a one on one match for the winner going to, um, 
Bash and Berlin to wrestle Jay White for the Intercontinental Championship. 90 rated tag team match. There we go. Oromensa gets a 90. <laughs> but it is Imperium, of course. Uh, the story of the match is, you know, Montez Ford is on top. Because he is the former world champion. He's wrestling Gunther. So we, we proved that Montez Ford could. He did, he could have what it takes to beat Gunther. But we, we need to give the spotlight more so to Oro. Because Oro is the man who takes the pin here. And he's got to try to prove he's on that level as well. He starts trying to take the fight to Vinci. He gets a very close near fall on Ludwig. But in the end they do put him down with the Imperial Bomb. 86 for Ludwig. 88 for Vinci. 76 for Oro. And 87 for Montez Ford. After the match, you know, Gunther gets into the ring. They hit the Imperium pose together. And Montez Ford's in the corner, you know, checking on Oromensa. And he goes, oh, you did good, kid. You did good. He went, I tried my best, Mr. Ford. We could have we won tonight, but it was all because of me. And Gunther's just up there, like, looking at Montez Ford, laughing at him. Like, maybe, like, kicking him while he's down there helping out Oromensa. He goes, hey, you know, you, your friend's a loser. And next week, you'll be a loser, too. And then Montez Ford gets to his feet. He angrily turns to face Gunther. And Gunther just laughs and goes, look at him, he's angry. And Montez Ford strikes, he takes Gunther down. He tries to fight off, he starts throwing hands at all of Imperium. They try and three on, or two on one, I guess, because Gunther's, you know, still winning from the hit. Oromensa springs into life, he tries to fight them off as well. And then Gunther gets up, he boots Montez Ford down. He hits a big power bomb on him. And he just sort of like laughs at him when he's on the floor and goes, that's the best you're going to get, you have to try harder than that if you want to take me down. Next week, next week will be easy for me. But yeah, Montez Ford, sticking up for himself and Oromensa tonight. Speaking of, next week, we do have that WWE Championship Tournament semi-finals. So uh, next week, we will find out who is going to Berlin. So it will be the winners of both these matches. The first being the phenomenal AJ Styles and Finn Balor one-on-one -on -one in a rematch from their clash at SummerSlam. This time with the, you know, the championship tournament rights also on the line, plus Montez Ford and Gunther one-on-one -on -one following that segment we just saw. Gunther disrespecting Montez Ford, Montez Ford firing up, getting into the face of Odin General. Can he get the job done next week? And on the women's end, we've got a big match as Tiffany Strand and Bailey are going to go one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Bailey came to the aid of Tiffany. That's how this match got set up. Bailey helped Tiffany Strand out against Nova, and Tiffany didn't like that, so yeah. Plus, you have from Damian Priest another clash between him and Trick Williams to maybe end this thing once and for all next week. And also for the Intercontinental Championship number one contendership, it's going to be LA Knight, yeah, against Wesley with the winner of that going on to Berlin to wrestle Jay White for the Intercontinental Championship. And speaking of Berlin, we have our first match officially set for that show, that being the first time ever two-generation clash. Cody Rhodes, Bronson Steiner, following Bronson Steiner's savage assault of the American Nightmare last week. Him and Cody Rhodes, they didn't come to blows tonight, but ne at, at Berlin in just over two weeks, I believe. Uh, it's the 14th of September, I want to say. If that's a Saturday. Uh, it is, so yeah. And yeah, that's going to go down Cody Rhodes and Bronson Steiner. <laughs> then see Lyra in Gorilla with Killer Kelly. I'm just saying, you know, you're standing here, you're about to go out, you haven't even got your championship over your shoulder. I know, but like, I, I get your concern, but this is the most success I've had in my career so far. You see, I'm a champion. I'm main eventing Raw in a championship match right now. Yeah, and Kenny goes, I get that, it's just, you're being used. And Lyra's like, sure, but you know, it's fun. And then Becky walks in. She just sort of just glares a hole through Killer Kelly. She goes, what's she doing here? And Lyra goes, she's just giving me some motivation ahead of our main event tonight. But he goes, motivation? From a loser? The only reason we've got this championship match this tonight is because you two lost last week, okay? I don't want Kelly stinking up our aesthetic, okay? She's killing the vibe, she's killing the aura. Okay, so you go away in the locker room for Bird Girl. If Bird Girl even still cares about you because she's got a new best friend. Me. Big time Becky Lynch, Be Becky Stardust, okay? And we are going to retain these tag team championships. Because look. We're the greatest tag team here in WWE. And Bird Girl is my partner. And Kelly just scoffs and goes, Okay, alright, Becky. And Lyra sort of like looks at Becky really happy. She goes, Becky? She goes, what? She goes, you just called me your partner. We're a team. And she went, 
<laughs> do you think Kelly believed that? And Lara goes, what do you mean? I had I had to get her away from here, you know, she was killing the vibe, so, you know. Yeah, pretending you and I are a tag team, are uh, adorable. Come on, bird girl, you know, let's go defend my championships right now. <laughs> and then Becky's music hits, she walks out. Lyra sort of looks at herself in the mirror and Gorilla just sighs and follows her out. 90 rated defense. Becky Lynch versus... <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I I made I made them a tag team in the game and called the tag team Becky Lynch. So it says Becky Lynch makes defense number one of the women's tag team championships. Nice, <laughs> but yeah, they do retain obviously. But there is some fuckery because Bianca Belair and Chikara Jackson are back out here and they screw Rocky Perez and Cora Jade, and Lyra gets the pin. Lyra pins Rocky with the guillotine to retain Becky's championship. 76 for Lyra, 89 for Becky, 82 for Roxy, and a 74 for Cora. And yeah, after the match, you know, Cora and Roxy, they sort of glare at ringside. Jakara and Bianca sort of like laugh in the front row. And Cora and Roxy then go through the crowd. They try and chase after Bianca and and Jakara through the crowd. So they're, they're out of the scene. And then Becky slides in with the belts. And Lara's sort of like, hey, you know, can I have my belt back? And Becky sort of looks at both belts. She puts one belt over her shoulder. And she sort of like holds the other belt in her hands, looking down at it. <laughs> and Lyra sort of like looking on eagerly, like, come on, you know, give it to me. It's my belt. And Becky's like looking down at the belt. And then just when it looks like she might consider handing Bird Girl the championship, Piper Niven pounces the fuck out of Becky Lynch. Uh, she then glares into, she then grabs a hold of uh, Lyra. Picks her up, hits a big summer one drop on her. Tegan's here, you know, but she's not as aggressive as Piper. But also, you know, they are coming for those tag team championships to get them back. Then Piper and Tegan do pick up the belts, and they hold the belts up. It's weird because you know they're the baby faces, but that was that <laughs> they they probably wouldn't get cheered because like this is this is the situation I'm having to deal with here. Is that in my mind, Becky's a heel, but she's not at the same time like it, it, so it, it's it, it, this this rough transition period is gonna be weird and you know like our beloved liberators who are like the the the, the, ba- the most white meat baby faces you've ever seen on Smackdown feel heelish for attacking a heel dickhead narcissist but you know so, so be wrestling <laughs> But, yeah, they are still obviously good guys. We, we still love them. And the crowd's probably happy to see them, because, you know, that they said they were coming over to Raw. It was a big trade, so here they are. 89 rate show. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, well, matters more, though, is what you thought of the show. Do let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'll see you on the other side now for Heat. Heat kicks off with Katana Chance again, you know, arriving to the arena, when she's immediately greeted by K- Kiana James. And Kelly goes, hey, Katana. She goes, what? She goes, I'm worried that last week, you know, we might have had a bit of a rough first start here. You know, obviously, as the stand-in interim general manager of the women's division, I need to take my talent requests seriously. And obviously, I knew that Sasha Banks, the CEO of this division, was just so much more of a better match than you that you didn't really have a chance when you wrestled her last week. Katana goes, well, I wouldn't put it that way. You know, I could have had her. But, you know, I'm waiting for another opportunity tonight, Kiana. Water under the bridge. And Kiana goes, yeah, you know, you're actually in action again tonight. I really want to see what you can do not against Sasha. So, I got you different opponent. And Kiana, Kiana goes, huh, did you now? Because I promise you, it's not Sasha Banks. Kiana goes, great, you know. I look forward to seeing who that is, then. So, you made opening match. Uh, Mina and Sol Ruka have a match. Uh, you know, stemming from last week where Zoe Stark slapped, I think, Kenzie Page of Club Venus. And, you know, Sol Ruka had to hold her back or, like, apologize or whatever it was. But, yeah, now Mina and Sol Ruka have a match. Mina does cheat to win in 14-13 using underhanded tactics. 70 for Mina, 61 for Sol. And then after the match, you know, Mina starts mocking. You know, she does a Club Venus do the, the dance over Sol Ruka when Zoe Stark gets into the ring. And she's obviously, you know... Zoe Stark is Zoe Stark. Anything sexy, she's against. So she's, like, getting in their face. 
<laughs> and Mina sort of like just shakes her tits in Zoe Stark's face. And Zoe turns around to Sol and she's like, please, please. And Sol's like, no, you know, you, you're, you're seeing, they're trying to, to get you to rise to them, you know. Just, just relax, chill. You don't have to smack anybody that inconveniences you. Then they go to leave, and Zoe Stark does then slap Mina on her way out, and Sol just sort of like throws her hands up at the end and goes, great, well done. And then her and Zoe do leave. Again, I think I've said this before with them, I believe, and also with uh, Ariana and Charlotte. Uh, they're not breaking up, these teams. I'm just creating a more fun dynamic between them. Like, there will always be built in tension between Ariana and Charlotte, but Charlotte loves her, so like, she's, she, they're not turning. And same with these two friends here, you know, well, while Zoe is going through a bit of an anger management problem. Sol is not just going to abandon Zoe. She likes Zoe. Ha! <laughs> Katana Chance is matched against Next Gen. Of course it is. Uh, they've sort of just become background muscle for Keanu James recently. So I thought I would actually get them back into the ring. They're actually doing pretty good ratings-wise. Uh, Kathy Cool gets a 63. 61 for Tracy Sharrow. 59 for Lucy Stryker. 52 for Samantha Riggs. Uh, Nene wasn't in the match. She was in head cannon, but you can't do 1v5s in the game, so it had to be 1v4. Yeah, obviously, should they do defeat your turn a chance? Kathy Cool pinning over Razzle Dazzle. Uh, yeah, next gen. The the other women under the farm of Kiana James have stopped Katana Chance here tonight. She didn't have a chance. Uh -huh. <laughs> we then get... An earlier today video segment. Uh, Jay and Fleur are on a tour bus. When they hear a knock at the door. They open the door and Chelsea Green is stood there. You know, looking miserable, draped out head to toe in, in J Flo merchandise. She goes, well I'm here. What do you want me to do? And Mackie just laughs. Points at Chelsea and laughs. And then all, all the girls start laughing at her. She goes, what? What's funny? She goes, you. You look so... Adorable! You've never looked better! And Chelsea goes, Grey, I feel hideous in this disgusting outfit. Mac goes, Anyway, Rhodey, Mizuki Tam, have a match tonight. We need bus clean, spotless by the time we get back. Okay, good night. And then they slam the door, and Chelsea Green is locked inside the tour bus, and she just sighs as she has to <laughs> clean the J Flow tour bus, as Tam and Mizuki do have a tag team match coming up next. Because it's 78. I'll take that. Uh, as you know, I forgot. That was uh, taped earlier on in the day. I think, did I, did I say that? Yes. Because Chelsea is out there, of course, cheering them on for this match. Because, you know, she's a, she basically becomes a cheerleader during these matches. But, of course, she does accidentally trip up uh, Mizuki, causing Alba Fire to pin over Gory Bomb in 12.54. 80 for Alba Fire, 68 for Ariana Webb, 71 for Tam, and 70 for Mizuki. Um, try not to beat too many ECW women on heat because I don't really want to beat them, not in the tournament. Which is why the main event um, is Zelina Vega and Tatum Paxley. Because I, I had both women, you know, I was like, they, I could give them both a win on heat. But, like, the only people I could think of them to wrestle would be ECW women. I didn't want to beat any ECW women. So they are wrestling each other in our main event. Because they're 74. It's actually pretty good considering the psychology wasn't great between them. Like, Zelina can call and ring, but not for 14 minutes against Pax. Like, yeah, she she can... Yeah, so I had to script it, so that's why the match range was probably a little bit lower. But yeah, Tatum is the one with a big program. Zelina is currently, like... She's a B player, a side character in the Kyrie Sane story, I guess. But Tatum is the one wrestling Jade Cargill soon, so... She gets the win. 13-39 with the Pax Plex. She only gets a 69, 72 for Zelina, so a little bit down on what she's normally been getting, but she's normally been wrestling, you know, top stars. But yeah, that does end Heat, that ends episode 29, we get a 72. Again, I'm as well as like you thought of the show. Do let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling, where we have a six-man tag. It's the Yeet, Yeetman, believe, Hendry, Jabon Strowman, Joe Hendry, and Jey Uso against the Paragon, as well as the start of the ECW Women's Championship Tournament. See you then.